Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Double RPG here, and welcome to another episode of the 4DS Audio Podcast. As I said, I'm Double RPG, and for this episode we have Bad Gamer, Carlio, and I'm a Mega Mario. Awesome sauce, guys. So, uh, how are you guys doing today? Oh, I'm okay. I'm just waiting for Wednesday next week because I'm getting Uncharted 3. Ooh, nice. I well, know, yeah. I I've been playing some uh, Kirby's Return to Dreamland, but I'll save that for uh, the video game playground. Are you angry, Carlio? He has returned to Dreamland. I don't have returned to Dreamland because someone at Nintendo thought they were going to release it a month or later. It's not. It's not called Returns to Dreamland in Europe. It's called Kirby's Adventure Wii. I don't care. <laughs> it's called Return to Dreamland. It's called Kip Kirby's Adventure, Kirby's Run to Dreamland, whatever. I don't have the game, I want it now. It's fun. I'll, I'll say it that much. It's really fun. And uh, Omega, what's up, buddy? Nothing, I'm just kind of enraged about a certain story bringing out a copy of my favorite game before next week. Ah. Yeah, Best Buy. I'm looking at you, you jerks. Yeah, I see. Well, because, um, right, because I want to play it, and of course, you know what game shops are like, sticking by the rules. They're like, no, we are not breaking street date for you, no way, sir. So if you want Sonic Generations, you've got to wait along with everyone else who's pre-ordered their copy. I'm sorry, but hey, fringe benefit. All those at Best Buy were like, yeah, we got our copies. Yay, yay, yay. You're forgetting one little thing. Casino night! Jerks. I may have to try out both the uh, the console version and the uh, the 3DS version when they come out. Uh, Double R, let me just tell you this. Sonic Generations on 3DS is just pretty much Sonic Rush Generations. I'm sorry, but yeah. <laughs> I don't care. Is, is that a bad thing? No, it's just that exactly. for 3DS, I'm surprised they didn't try and do any 3D game. Oh, they didn't try to do any of the 3D or Sonic's uh, 3D levels or whatever? I mean, or they did try Sonic. and make it like, behind the thingy, like, Sonic Unleashed and that. Boost to win. Boost to win. Boost to win. Mm. I see. Oh, well. I still intend to try it regardless. But anyway, guys, um, the 4DS podcast, for those of you joining the first time, we are a weekly show where we talk about the uh, the big highlight, which was the biggest piece of news for the week. Then we go to Retro Gems where we talk about a franchise or a video game character or a video game in retrospect. And then we go to the big release where we talk about a game that, you know, that was the big release uh, as of this past week. Then we go to the execution where we talk about a game that needs to be axed for an eternity. And then we go to the video game playground to talk about the games that we have been playing. And it's going to be another jam-packed show for all of you today. So, anyway, guys, let's get started with the big highlight. The, the big, big highlight. highlight. Yay! Yay! And yeah. more actually sad news. No. Yeah, Again, more sad news, sadness. sadly. Sad face. Yeah, very sad. Because um this uh this week in news is in relation to Nintendo. And back on Thursday, I think, Nintendo posted their first um their first um uh, half of the current fiscal year with the uh the the number uh, or the earnings loss that they had uh posted. And the total money that they lost out of the first fiscal, you know, first half of the fiscal year was 70.2 billion yen, which equates almost a billion dollars. Damn! Ouch. Yeah, and uh, we all have some good rebuttals as to why they lost so much, you know, during the first half of the fiscal year. Most notably, Ma the failed 3DS launch. Oh, yes. My point exactly. Yeah. It was such a big failure. Barely any titles to they could lean on because there was nothing of a first party game. It was it was pretty much yeah. this coming soon on 3DS, a game that's been ported loads of times on the Xbox. Super Street Fighter Four. 
Yawn. A game yeah. that's also been ported more times than ever. Rayman 3DS. Yawn. Oh, and a new game for the first party. And kit and girls are going to love it. Nintendogs plus cats. Okay. Yawn. I can't. That isn't okay. really that if you like if you like those kind of games. And I actually was really close to mine because I love cats. Oh yeah. I mean I tried Nintendo oh, Dogs oh, oh, on the DS oh, oh, and oh, I actually liked it personally. But please, please, guys, guys, let's not forget about the biggest release of the uh, of the launch, Pilot Wings. Oh yeah, yeah, Pilot Wings Resort. You waited a load of years for a Pilot Wings sequel, you finally got it with Pilot Wings Resort. Yeah, which then no one cared about about. Yeah, we're going to go to the Wii Island Resort from uh, Wii Sports Resort, and we'll just have you flying around the whole place. That's pretty much what Pilot Wings is Resort is going to be all about. Nothing new or nothing that follows the original Pilot Wings format from the Super Nintendo or the Nintendo 64. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was kind of shocked about I'm that, too. But to uh, Then later, they thought... You've been waiting for this game for a while. We teased it in the trailers to be out on launch, but we finally got it to you. Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, 3D. Um, yeah, it's just that with this, you know, with this earnings loss, it's something that, you know, all, uh, I mean, the oh, first party actually, uh, developers I, and, you know, console and hardware manufacturers have to realize is that in order to have a strong launch, they need to launch it at the right time and have games that people want to play at launch. That's the only way you're going to make money is to make sure that you have really good titles to play and you manage to sell a lot of systems at, you know, at the right time, too. Yes. The thing mm -hmm. is, they made they made three fail, um, st they made three stupid things when they were launching the 3DS. One is the price was really high. Two, mm -hmm. nothing they could, not not a title launch title that really could like. Oh, if you buy this, you get this also, and this game is really awesome. I mean, if the Ocarina of Time came out faster, I. Th came out during the time period, like after maybe a week after the launch or so, or during the when it actually came out. It would sell they would have much no more. problem selling. Much more. And the th and the third or maybe, one or maybe they should have just or maybe they should have just waited a few months to get like for example Super Mario out. Super Mario Oh yeah, Land, Super 3D Mario Three Land. Land. Yeah that that's uh, also another one of the things too that I that I think that Nintendo has been failing to do ever since uh, ever since the GameCube is that they haven't released a Mario game at launch, which is which you know looking at uh, console launches you know back in the past they usually had a Mario game that was bundled with the system most of the time and that managed to pull in some really strong sales for the system at launch. In fact, what's yes. it like to be and like when you don't release a main pro like again say. No, fact is that up to this point, I'm pretty sure that there haven't been that many original, like big first-party titles at all. Besides, you no know, real releases of, for example, Ocarina of Time and Star Fox. You know, yeah, Star Fox. Other than that, there haven't been that many first-party releases, have there? Uh, no, there hasn't. To be quite honest, nope. I mean, I yeah, I you, there are there are some on the eShop, true, but, but eShop is not the same thing. Exactly. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, well, you can buy this on eShop. Well, why did you just release it in game format? It's just sure, no problem. But for just the biggest, it's, it's, I mean, you you would have hyped it up so much if you just waited some months with, with releasing it. Right but now, but yeah, sure. Now it's just like now you're just looking at how much the three S just right now costs. It's like, well, you blame yourself. You should have well, thought this true for once, Nintendo. Well, um, but well, with I, the, I, well, with Satoru Iwata, he did, you know, he did admit, you know, when they cut the price that it was a really big mistake, and he is taking responsibility for it. So I at least have to give him props for that. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah and, they, and that they also cut their own law, their own salaries to, to what happened with it. And I, as I said that time. Major props to those guys when they did that. Mm hmm. Yeah. Everyone got cut, even Shigeru Miyamoto and everyone in the real top. Somehow everyone I doubt cut. that Reggie Fizame managed to get cut. 
<laughs> but, and I'll be saving the, that very shortly as to why I think that you I know this uh, biggest, this loss is only going to continue to get much more worse. I still say that the biggest one is that they still uh, uh, sell the DS XL. Why are you still doing this if you want to push out the new one? Stop selling old gen. Well, well, that brings us nicely on to what Double R is going to explain. Double R, take hey. it away. Thank you, bad gamer. <laughs> no problems. And, um, yeah, I my thoughts on this, you know, what Nintendo of America is doing for this holiday season, you know, since the new DSi XL bundles, you know, being packaged with Mario vs. Donkey Kong Mini Land Mayhem on November mm. 6th is not that bright, or it's not that very positive. Because, you know, it just seems like Nintendo of America is hurting sales of the 3DS significantly once more and you know and it's just they they've got to retire the ds because it's already an old gen system and when it comes to the u.s consumer base the consumers are not really that bright when they're trying to determine you know the difference between the ds and the 3ds and i'm sorry to you know people in america who you know feel that it's not right but i'm but I, i'm saying it from right here it's true i mean uh you know, they they still haven't figured out what the true difference between the two uh, platforms are, and that when they should realize, you know, looking at the 3DS, it's actually a next gen console or a next gen handheld rather. And uh, you know, when you release a a DSi XL bundle that has a free game attached to it at the same price as what the Nintendo 3DS is right now, that's going to be commercial suicide. And yeah, and, it, and it's like. It's like they're trying a new Virtual Boy or something here. And we all know how well the Virtual Boy went. <laughs> but the thing is, this is not... The thing is, unlike the Virtual Boy, 3DS is actually good. It's it's an upgrade of the already pretty, uh, already pretty alright system. It's a, it's a GameCube. It's a portable GameCube. With 3D effects. Yeah, and which sure, the GameCube what, should have had. Well, I'm just saying that, you know, if Nintendo of America continues to go with their decision, I guarantee you that it's going to be a rude awakening for them, you know, when it comes to the second half of the fiscal year. And the only people oh, they're yeah. going to have to blame is themselves. And, yes, I'm uh, talking to you, Reggie fils -Aimé. I don't know what you're even thinking when you're, you know, doing something just completely ridiculous as this. I mean, why are you not following in Nintendo of Europe and Nintendo of Japan's example when they are getting games that you know, all of us want to play, but you're not even doing jack squat about it. I mean, they're all getting the Operation Rainfall games, but we are not. And what are you thinking? Well, I, well, I, I have been saying well, this well, before. Well, 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 you can take well, it first. To, to, be, first. to be fair, Reggie has a good reason. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> and I've been, I've been saying this before, and I will say it again. It is like he does. It is like Reggie doesn't like Jap Nintendo of Japan for some reason, or it is like he's trying to kill Nintendo. I mean, with all the decision, with all the stupid decision he's doing, he, he, something, is not right in that man's head. I am sorry, but, jeez. Do, uh. do you know what? Right. Basically, with the bloody. Uh, 3DS and the DSi, you're getting a free game with it when you buy a new one anyway. It's just called opening your eyes, click on the eShop and find something called Legend of Zelda Four Swords. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but at the same time, and, that one. Uh, but I think the but I think the main thing that they're forgetting, you know, with the 3DS is that it's backwards compatible with the DS. I don't know why they're releasing an old gen system with a new game when they sh I mean with a free game when they should have that DS game attached on the 3DS as like you know as a bonus yeah. you know what actually you know I, what I, I'm thinking what what I'm wondering what I did not do when the, the three uh, Ocarina of Time came out why didn't they bundle up that one also with the 3DS and I mean it's a good question I mean that would sell I mean think like oh I get I buy a 3DS and I get Ocarina of Time it's the game is I mean many people consider this to be the greatest Zelda game of all time and one of the best Nintendo games I highly have to disagree, but still, it's a good game. But I mean, people were like, "Oh yeah, finally!" I mean, you guys are getting pay. some. 
you guys are getting some really cool uh, 3DS bundles, especially with the uh, the Ice White with the Super Mario 3D Land, as well as uh, you guys are getting Monster Hunter Tri-G, and there's also going to be a Woo-hoo! bundle for that as well. And it's just, all we're getting is nothing but uh, old gen yeah, and nothing but crap. You want to know the worst part? Nintendo is going to do this again, and you know it, because... So as soon as the Wii, as you know, said before, not yeah, everyone Wii can U. tell the difference between the DSi and the DS. They are going to do the exact same thing with the Wii U. And they're going to forget that, well, maybe we should, shouldn't focus so much on the Wii anymore because, you know, the Wii U is out. But they are not going to do that. It, Actually, it, it's it, maybe, maybe, maybe Japan... Actually, and Europe are going to be focusing on the Wii U at this point, but I don't think Nintendo of America is going to let the Wii go. Exactly. At the same time, that they is so to... stupid. At the same time, they still they seem to be doing that because with the whole the games operating uh, the rainfall games we are getting, and they don't. The reason why is because according to them, they want to not have too many games for the Wii, so that the Wii U can co- come out. Which yeah, is pretty complete. much. Uh, and if, excuse my words. Excuse my wording here. But that is complete bull. But yeah, it's just that the thing with Reggie Fizame is that um, you know, with him not, you know, pleasing us instead of just being all talking. I mean, sure he's a great spokesperson, but the thing he fails to do is to take action like uh, Nintendo in Japan and Nintendo of Europe. So it's either I mean, it's come to this point where he either needs to resign from being president and chief operating officer, or Nintendo needs to come out and just completely fire him and hire somebody who actually knows what they're doing. You know, like uh, Satoru Iwata or whoever from Nintendo of Europe. You know, knows how to please their fans and know how knows how to market their products well because that's the thing that Reggie Fizame is really lacking big time because it only seems like he's more about the selling point rather than you know, you know, wanting to get the uh, get the, the sales of the, uh, the the 3DS and the game sold immensely for them to become a success, a bigger exactly. success. Mm-hmm. I I think at some point he has lost his. Where he thought he was taking Nintendo, and it just at some point he's like, it's just start thinking like, what I what am I doing? Mm-hmm. But as it seems, he should he's not. And but no, even though there, but even though there are some negatives that are toward you know Nintendo's earnings loss, there's actually some positives that could actually act as a catalyst, and that is. Uh, Nintendo is, um, you know, with the holiday season coming up, analysts have predicted that the 3DS should become a really big seller this holiday season, and it should ease up on Nintendo's uh, losses that they made it in the first uh, half of the fiscal year. So their uh, earnings report for the uh, end of the year should actually be a lot better than what they lost. So I think that is a good sign. But, you know, with Nintendo of America releasing the DSi XL bundles when the consumer base is not really that bright, yeah, I really hate to see, you know, you know the, uh, the rude awakening that they're going to be inflicted by when it comes to March 31st of 2012. Yep. Mm-hmm. We can only but, hope. But we can only wait and hope. Yep, but uh, I just hope that they don't take the same approach with the Wii U in terms of releasing it too early, and uh, which it doesn't seem like it's going to be that way because Iwata did say that um, that they do plan on releasing the Wii U after E3 of next year, but when that's going to occur, I'm not sure, but I would like to see it released around the time of the holiday season with a good lineup of games that comes out for it, because that way they could actually make a really successful launch, and, you know, they wouldn't even have to suffer the same problem as they did right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The only thing I'm hoping for, hoping for with the Wii U is a good launch game. Something that, that it can stand on. Get, I mean, give us a Mario game at launch, even if it's new Super Mario Brothers Me or the next 3D Mario game that uh, that they already announced, or what Yoshiaki Koizumi, the current you know handler of the 3D Mario games, has already announced. Then, if you got, if you guys can get us either one of those two games at launch as a launch title, then you're definitely going to be making lots of money, and you know, oh, definitely yeah. be making some uh, really good sales around that time too. You know, you know speaking of that. Actually, just going a bit off topic, 
what could Mario actually develop further? He's been, let's see here, he's been on the ground, on a summer vacation, in space! Space! And, and what now? Universes? Well, oh, galaxy is definitely thing. the same thing as a universe. Or different well, dimensions, rather. Exactly. Yeah. Could do... Maybe next, maybe next game dimensions. is all generations. Yeah, it goes to different dimensions and all that, where the uh, the level designs are going to be radically different and all the worlds are going to be insanely unique than what we've seen in the Mario games as of recent. Or, or, or figure this, Mario Generations. <laughs> oh, no. yeah. Well, no. that, that'd that be a really hard one to do because Mario hasn't it's really so evolved that much from his character design because he's pretty... I mean, he still, you know, has the same basis for his character throughout all those years, so it's kind of yeah. hard for, you know, bringing his past self with his future, you know, with his current modern self well, into it, but, doing yeah. an adventure. I mean, but I guess could... they could try something where they could do, like, um, you know, if they wanted to uh, do both, uh, if they wanted to incorporate levels from both the 2D and 3D perspective into one game, then yeah, I could definitely see that happening. But, uh, you know, in terms of, like, having old and new collaborate with each other, that's going to be kind of a hard thing to pull off because and Mario hasn't really evolved that much as a character throughout all these years. And technically, mm -hmm. there, is, there is a game where he met with his old self, and it's called Partners in Time. <coughs> oh, yeah. That was, his ba that was his baby self, and then his older. Seems there's no, like... T uh, time, you know, you should act, not touch your old, yourself when you know, travel back in time. Oh yeah. yeah actually, one thing yeah, they could do that is that rule uh, got broken in that game, didn't it? Yeah. Well, it's actually a theory from uh, Back to the Future. I mean, it's either that or they just faint when they see each other. Oh yeah. It's actually one thing they could do is like um, having different um, more from different Mario, like Paper Mario meet the three D Mario, for example. Well, that would be something that Nintendo would have to work with, even with the uh, second-party developers, because they'd have to get them to be, you know, to take a part in it too. So it'd be like a huge development process to go by. And it, not to mention, they would have would need to be extremely innovative, and that is po impossible. Mm-hmm. No, just kidding. Well, anyway, guys, um, to conclude on this subject, um, the earnings loss, it may be really big, and I know lots of people are crapping their pants and thinking that, you know, this is the end of Nintendo, but no, no. it's not. So just quit your whining and just wait till after and the holiday season because I guarantee you that the earnings are going to be a lot better and that Nintendo is definitely pulling themselves out of the mud as of right I now, and they... And they said that they're going to make sure that they're not going to, you know, repeat history again when it comes to the release of the Wii U sometime after June of 2012. But we'll have I mean, to see. I, I got two things to say, to say about that. It's one, first, change your pants if you actually did it. Second of all, it's Nintendo. Yeah, change your pants. That, yeah, th th thank you for bringing that up, <laughs> bad gamer. Yeah, bad gamer. Speaking yeah. of that. No. If if you sneeze during this segment, then bless you. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Hey, okay, guys, <laughs> um, it's time for us to get on to our next segment, and that is the retro gems. Retro gems. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and for some good old g fashion gaming. Yay. Good old fashion gaming at its finest, and since it's well, we didn't need to worry about uh, big stupid losses or anything. Yeah. Something happy to talk about, and since it's almost Halloween, it's time for us to talk about a game that is horror-themed related, and that is Castlevania. <laughs> ah, ah, Castlevania. The many what years of that? good, where it mostly consists of the Belmont clan fighting against Count Dracula. Die, monster. You don't belong in this world. What is a man? A miserable pile of secrets! But enough talk! Have at you! <laughs> We should do the whole. We should do that whole dialogue, by the way. <laughs> oh God, that dialogue uh, was awful in it's the his original. It's greatest dialogue of all time. Don't you dare dishonor it. <laughs> okay, um, Castlevania. It's a. It's another franchise by Konami that has been made ever since, like the beginning of the NES, and it's exploded into this huge franchise that manages to maintain maintain tradition most of the time, but uh, they tend to take different routes, kind of like the Metroidvania route. And some of the 3D games, well, they're kind of 
okay to lackluster at best, but at least the series managed to maintain with its roots most of the time. Hey, hey, Lords of Shadows was good. Well, yeah, well, I can disagree, I mean, I can uh, tend to say that Lords of Shadow is more considered to be like the saving grace of 3D Castlevania games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but when I said poop, I meant the original Castlevania 3D game. Oh, Castlevania 64? Yeah. (laughs) Or which one, Legacy of Darkness? Legacy of Darkness kind of made it a little bit more. Oh, Legacy of Darkness was ten times better. Even yeah, hers are that's what I mean. Than, are bigger than mine. Yeah. But um, anyway, guys, in retrospect, Castlevania, you guys' thoughts on the first game? Hard. Yeah. Hard Castle- as hell. <laughs> Hard as hell, okay. but uh, at least it was not impossible like the third game. Yeah. As, as, as the trope has given its name these days, NES hard. Just oh, saying. Yeah. Nintendo they, hard. Oh, yeah. They Nintendo knew how to get their difficulty hard. on during the uh, days of retro. And everyone's yeah. everyone's dreaded stage, the clock tower. Oh, yes. Yeah. And everyone's okay. dreaded and that, and that walkway before you have to fight against death. Yeah, I remember that. Where you have Medusa I've... heads and Axe Knights just coming out of nowhere, which it takes forever to defeat the Axe Knights, and it takes a while to understand the pattern of the Medusa heads that you have to, you know, that you either have to duck from uh... or to jump over. And yeah, it was hell. Ah, what is that? Um, I think Eager Raptor put it better. By the way, Eager Raptor's on the tester, so at least you have a reason to watch who, season three. Oh yeah, good me. point. Yeah, it, I hope Eager Raptor really. made a very good point about Castlevania, and that's the way they made it that hard was to get the most value out of the game. Oh, no kidding. Oh, yeah. Because because you know how it is, you can get Super Mario and be like, yeah, I can complete this in an hour. Or as a nerd would be like, yeah, I can complete this in an hour. <laughs> I'm so awesome. Yeah. Get Castlevania then, buddy, and put that in. Oh, my God, it's so hard. Oh, my God. Oh, wait, an hour's gone by, and I still haven't got past this stage. God damn it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And um, But then the next game that came after that was Castlevania II, Simon's Quest, and it pretty much took the Legend of Zelda two. Adventures of Link type of approach. But, yeah, I mean, it's a flawed game, but it does have some nostalgia value. I mean, the uh, the, the dialogue between characters is just kind of very lackluster, and uh, wait, the non-linearity kind of killed it a little bit. Today is a horrible wait, night wait. to have a curse. Exactly. Yeah, the day to night transition was ugh. Why did you Thank always you. have to put in that slow moving text box to make you know you... the transition between night and day just go by like that? I mean, they couldn't have the box if you could skip it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe yeah, need once to load is or enough. something. Once is enough, and uh, it it should have been easier, you know, for day and night to come by where you can just continue playing instead of waiting for that text box to, you know, get through, and then all of a sudden the game just stops playing because it has to transition between those two days. Why not just keep going? Then the annoying fact is that the enemies you just killed return again. Oh, yeah, no kidding. So, like, well, you're like, well, oh, you killed it. What a horrible night to have a curse. Ah, come on! And some, and, and it was really even hard reason, to get by through most of the game to figure out how you can manage to get through all the way through. How about it's the like one of those games messages. where you need a Nintendo Power Map to beat it. You need a, yeah. you need a strategy guide anyway, because is there anything you do not know? You need to select the red crystal, you need to kneel at the, the big that wall. Point and a tornado, com- tornado, yeah. <laughs> the tornado comes from nowhere, and it's like, how... Then, and you gotta equip the blue crystal water, and kneel by a lake for safe. it to, uh, you know, shrink down to where there's a secret passageway. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how are you supposed to know that? And the thing is, if you don't need that, you drown. But if it's a platform on redemption, you, you drown. Yeah. Well, it's a game, logic. but uh, it still holds some nostalgia overall. Okay, okay. Um, Castlevania Three: Dracula's Curse. I have to say, even though it's good... I mean, it's really good, but it's really hard at the same time. A lot harder than the first Castlevania. Hmm. Yeah, it's hard, but it's still uh, it's get it goes. Um, I can it's still okay because of the gameplay is rock solid and the music mm-hmm. is awesome. Oh yeah, and it was the first game too where you can play as multiple characters. 
as and well. And introduced to the son of Dracula, Alucard. And even gave birth to the uh, to the canon storyline of of Simon Belmont and the or the Belmont and the Bel- the Benaldes or the Belnades clan, you know. Yep. Where the Belmonts are mostly consisted of males, and where the Benaldes or Belnades clan is mostly consisted of females. Hmm. And some yep. people even say that. Both uh, Trevor and Sypha actually got married at the end, and where future generations of the Belmonts actually had magic. You know, like Richter and Juiced and even... Juiced usually is the child from those two, actually. That's because he's like the powerful Belmont, Belmont in the, cla- in the, gen- in the mm-hmm. timeline. Right. Because he was... Canon. Mm-hmm. Well, and it, was it, also canon, so. it was also the first game to introduce Alucard into the uh, the storyline. Yeah, and he pretty also much known became... as the son of Dracula. Which, and, yeah. and by the way, the Japanese were so witty when they came up with the name for Alucard. Mm-hmm. Oh, and also another thing that too bad we did not have the Famicom Disk System because the music uh, for the third one in Japan is. More Com- superior. It's completely different in so many good ways. Oh, yeah. If you haven't uh, even listened to it, go to YouTube right now and uh, search uh, Castlevania 3 Dracula's Curse Music Famicom Disk System, and then there you go. I, I'm sending it's, a link it's the to reason that. why the US, NES, and the UK one kind of ticks people off, because the music was much more better. Mm-hmm. I mean, we can link you to one of the, them in the part in the description so you can listen because you need to listen to at least one of those tracks mm. though they are so different okay and then after the nes trilogy there came super castlevania 4 on the super nintendo and it's by far my favorite entry in the series which coincidentally you're doing a let's play on oh oh yeah well live commentary yes <laughs> it's a let's play my favorite my favorite, that is not my favorite. I have, it might come much later in when we go talk about it. Mm hmm. That's all I've done. But, uh, yeah, but the reason why I like Super Castlevania 4 a lot better than the NES games was because the controls were a lot more redefined to where you can actually have more total control of your character. And you can, and it's the only game in the series where you can actually whip in all eight directions, you know, up, down, left, right, and then diagonals. And you can yep. even move while you're crouching. The music, the the soundtrack is definitely one of the best in the entire series, hands on. Da, da, and, da, da, yeah. da. and it has uh, one of the most iconic themes in the franchise, which is the theme of Simon Belmont. Which is which still... that the original rendition of that song is actually my favorite in the entire do, franchise. Do, 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 I, do, do, my do, favorite do, do, do. of all the Castlevania uh, tracks are Iron Blue Intention. That one is. Well, my favorite. Yeah, Too that was from, very... that was that originated from uh, Bloodlines on the Sega Genesis or Generations in the in Europe for you guys. Over here, yeah. Yeah, but that one just oh god, that was just that Perfect. one is my favorite. And then my one's always been Bloody Tears. Oh yeah, that that's also pretty good. <laughs> and then another <laughs> then <laughs> another one of the games that um, people tend to. Uh, that that didn't come out, you know, in the West the first time around, but did come out in Japan was uh, Castlevania Rondo of Blood or Dracula X in the West, as it's called. Dracula uh, X. I they, mean, I I actually played both of them. I mean, they are both hard, but at least Rondo of Blood were made to be hard, not poorly uh, ported. Mm-hmm. But uh, the Dracula X we got over here was nothing like Rondo of Blood, even though it did follow the same storyline, but it was radically different, and a lot harder, too. A lot harder for all the wrong reasons. Mm-hmm. Okay, Maybe you uh, can X? But, uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of people consider that to be the best Castlevania game from the classic format, but I don't personally, but... Uh, it it's still it's still a very solid game, the original Rondo of Blood, but just not Dracula X that we got in the West. But Rondo of Blood, it's pretty solid. Oh yeah. Dracula it introduces X. Richter Belmont, which he seems to be more of the predominant Belmont that's represented in Iga's um 
timeline whenever yeah, it comes to yeah, the extra to, stuff and whatnot. Yeah, he seemed to love Richter. I mean, he gets... But most because he was the last also Belmont to uh, to hold the, the vampire whip. Oh, yeah, vampire until, killer. Until not, yeah, until the vampire killer, until 1991, where, when... Um, Don't you mean Julius, 1999? Nine, yeah, my bad. 1999, when the, when the final battle is supposed to take place, which I still want a game of! Yeah, me too. Yeah, make that for us, Ega, on the 3DS. Please. Or console, whatever. Just get... But prefer in the 3DS and in Metrovania fashion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's another <clears throat> set of games that we should be talking about next, just to keep this uh, subject uh, short and simple, is the Metroidvania uh, Castlevania games. Most notably, Symphony of the Night and Circle of the Moon, uh, Harmony of Dissonance, Aria and Dawn of Sorrow, Portrait of Ruin, and Order of Ecclesia. I can say this straight. I love every of the DS games of the Castlevania. Those are my favorite, and my top favorite is Dawn of Sorrow. <clears throat> Oh yeah, I agree. And and when I say Dawn of Sorrow is my favorite, I mean favorite out of all the Castlevania games. Um, well, I definitely think that Arya and Dawn of Sorrow was a, definitely an evolution in the uh, Metroidvania fashion after Symphony of the Night, <clears throat> and because of the whole uh, thing where you can obtain the souls of your enemies to be used as power ups and to gain you different abilities and that kind of stuff. I definitely yeah. thought that was revolutionary. In the formula, yeah, and that's why I liked so much about it. Also, because I, I, I just, pref I just, I just prefer uh, Soma over Alucard. Please mm -hmm. don't kill me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he <gasps> seems to be more of one of those uh, people that's you know original in terms of you know in terms of a hero rather than just uh, you know being somebody out of the Dracula mythos and whatnot. I was. Yeah. It's just the, the twist and is from the he, original Castlevania that, mythos as well. It's just the, the thing is when it turns out that he is the reincarnation of Dracula. It's like, wow, wow. I was like, did not mm -hmm. see that coming. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where it's like, oh my god, I didn't even see that one coming. Even though they kind of hinted at it in the storyline, but uh, oh yeah, but it, just something you didn't think mm -hmm. so much. Just like, oh. I just happened to have the power. It's called dominance, dominance, and it's like, okay. Then it's like, oh, Dracula's supposed to be like, okay, maybe he is the right. Dracula. But still, it was like, mm. Mm. But yeah, the the Metroidvania games, they're they're really fun. Except the the probably the two that were the most challenging had to be Circle of the Moon and uh, Order of Ecclesia. Oh, Order of Ecclesia kick my butt. Yet. <laughs> yes, <laughs> my butt nice so color. hard. Yeah, because, it's definitely yeah. really hard, but definitely a lot of fun. You know, just because a game's hard doesn't mean it's bad, right? No, no, of course not. I played Ninja Gaiden. Oh, I played yeah. Dark Souls. <laughs> but I have a point. Yeah, I mean, uh, Omega Carleo, did you have any uh, favorite Castlevania games that you liked? Mm, well, I mean, you guys are hardly not talking that much. Um, yeah, because once again, once again, this is the kind of franchise I missed out on, even though I have been following it pretty much, because thanks to a YouTuber called Super Skarmory, who has been doing walkthroughs of, what is it called? Um, the, uh, with Soma, the game with Soma. Oh, uh, yeah. Aria and Dawn of Sorrow? Yeah, Aria of Sorrow. Yes. Don't know, so, wait, like Dawn of Sorrow. He did the game of Dawn, oh. of, with Dawn of Sorrow and uh, Order of Ecclesia, so I've been following it a bit more. Colio, you have no excuse. It's the internet. There are ways to get it. I don't gonna say what this, but you should know of the ways. I can tell the reason. I don't have a USB controller yet. You can do it on the keyboard. It's not okay, that this hard. Okay, this is going in a bad way, so I'm gonna carry on now. <laughs> <laughs> my my favorite is uh, Symphony of the Night. Of course, that's the one I've got on my Xbox. And completed. <laughs> Yay. And then uh, I want to get the DS one, seeing as I've got a 3DS Nintendo. Wink, wink. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But, yeah. Um, I think Harmony of Despair is like, bring some of my favorite characters in. <laughs> But 
Yeah. Yeah. It is good. I've played it myself a couple of times. Although I still want to have fun. I did not play them. It, it, the only one I played was Lord of Shadows. I was played the demo of Lord of Shadows and it was alright. And the demo doesn't really speak of what the game really is, so... Maybe, but it still was alright. It's not even a whisper. It's like a cough. <laughs> Not only that, he did one of the most raging uh, retcons ever. And that would be? Cas Castlevania Legends. The first and only female Oh, yeah, Belmont. Sonya. <laughs> Sonya. WTF, Iga. What are you thinking? Yeah, that's kind of... That's very because questionable you don't because... Sonya was actually a really good Belmont. She was. She was a really strong. She was actually a really strong character, one of the strongest in the Belmont clan, actually. Mm -hmm. But since he wrote out of shit, but since he retconned her, it's she. No, it's like f you, Iga. Yeah. <laughs> but um, wow. I mean, the 3D games, I haven't even played them. I mean, I haven't played a lot of them, but I well, I did try uh, Curse of Darkness and uh, Lament of Innocence. I mean, like I said, I didn't particularly care for them because I felt they were repetitive, but I have played Lords of Shadow, and I definitely like it a lot better than what Iga had envisioned. And uh, Legacy of Darkness, I played that, and I definitely think it's a lot... And, you know, definitely think it's possibly the best... 3D Castlevania game in the original canon, you know, aside from Lords of Shadow, taking a different route, you know, in terms of the uh, storyline, but, uh, <clears throat> yeah, still pretty fun. So, yeah. all in all, guys, um, the Castlevania series, it's still a very strong uh, IP for Konami, and I really hate to see, you know, the original canon just be you know, die down at this point. I'd like to see more games continue, or ones that continue after <sighs> Lords of Shadow, but uh, it's still a pretty strong series, wouldn't you say? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes. There's still... only two things There's only two things I ask for them. First, make a game of the final battle with Dracula from 1999 with Julius. I want to play that game. Come on, Come on. Second of all, yeah, make us a new... Castlevania. It could be old school, it could 2D, Metrovania, 3D, just give us something new also. Give us a third Sorrow game and you could actually call that the Sorrow Trilogy. Oh, oh yeah. Yes, <laughs> do it. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. You need to no. please me, you need to please me. But yes, we, we'll be looking forward to seeing what Konami has in store for the Belmont clan with their fight against Dracula in the future, but uh, who knows? Maybe it will be Metroidvania on the 3DS, or maybe it will be another stellar 3D game like Symphony... I mean, not Symphony, but Lords of Shadow, but who knows. Anyway, guys... Uh, just, just let us leave you with this. Religion! <laughs> Religion. Oh, okay, guys, it's time for us to go to our next segment, and that is the big release. The big release! Yes! And gamers, the we know that some release. of you were probably going to ask us, you know, the the big game that we're going to be talking about this week, and we all know and that you're really hyped for it, and that you are enjoying the crap out of it, and we're excited to talk about it too, and here it is. Our big release this week is Dragon Ball Z Ultimate Tenkaichi on the PS3 and the 360. Yay! Awesome ah, game. take that, you fool, oh, yeah. you say something <laughs> else. <laughs> yeah. Awesome game, oh. man, awesome oh. game. His Here's uh, Vegeta to say it. Final Flash! <laughs> yeah. It's just that um, we know that Battlefield 3 has came out this week, but it's just, it, it's already Detroit getting too much hype as it is. Much as Modern Warfare 3 is going to get too much hype, but uh, you know what? Let's just stick with, to with something that that's... Said, with that said, I was doing one for this right now. Yeah, Battlefield 3 is good, but really, if you haven't heard about this right now, you can go listen to another part. You can, no, actually, no, don't do that, but, but, you know, well, I'm sure a lot of other guys are talking about it too, so you don't really need us to just hammer it in more that Battlefield 3 is the greatest game of all time, because it is not. 
Right. The thing Fact. is, guys, uh, the thing is, listeners, that uh, neither of us is really big up when it comes to the more the shooting, the, the, the get, modern shooting yeah. uh, games. Yeah, like the, the only one that is like biggest on the modern shooting is probably me because you know. I was actually kind of excited, but then I played a single player campaign and you know, like I was just shut down. So let's talk about something else. Yeah. So we decided to talk about something slightly that we maybe something that releases something that releases every year and gets milked, but milked in somewhat the right way. <laughs> exactly. That is the Dragon Ball Z games. This is Ultimate Tenkaichi. The first game I'll have to say is where no, I mean I'll have to say it's the first game in the series where they tend to you know, a uh, step away from the norm a bit, where they add in the new character creation feature with its own story. I, I'm I'm loving that, and finally I can make my own character. And I like, even though it's gonna be a bad, bad Dragon Ball Z plot, you know, and mm -hmm. find the seven Dragon Balls, wish for something, evil man from outer space, destroy it with a kamehameha in your face. Yeah, I mean, um. I have played the uh, the Budokai games on the PS2 as well as uh, Budokai I Tenkaichi. Played, I have played more or less every Dragon Ball Fighter game, at least from the PS2, the first one, and er, er, anything but that to now. I have played mm -hmm. every single one, and I prefer the what this the over the shoulder fighting than right. the whole 2D fighting, most because it's. I like when you get the freedom to feel like I'm actually in a Dragon Ball fight. Right. And, um... Just, mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, it, and it's just the thing is, with the uh, with the Dragon Ball games, you know, with... Uh, after, you know, Budokai 2, it's just that they tend to try different things to, you know, go through with the same storyline, but they don't really tend to, you know, deviate from the norm... A whole lot. I mean, they do have some of their original storylines, but they could have done something that, you know, was a bit more original, like having new enemies and, like, a new plot and that kind of stuff to, you know, one that would actually make the story a bit better. Or, well, not just a bit better, but actually really good for, you know, something that could be fit within the Dragon Ball franchise. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, but at the same time, I always preferred to... Uh, for me, it's like, as long as I get the story mode and it's somewhat in somewhat new way at least looking at it uh i'm fine as long as i get uh Seijin saga to boo saga i'm fine mm -hmm. mm. yeah I um i think what i like about this uh ultimate tenkaichi is that it's got an anime intro which i haven't seen in ages yeah and then the story cool. mode incorporates scenes from the anime Actually, oh, they yeah. also they also redraw dude into all the scenes are made are redrawn also are re are remade so yeah I remade all the key scenes from the anime yeah only thing I still question is there English voice acting voice acting because I prefer the English actually I prefer the dub uh, I don't know um, also they done a Naruto uh, Ninja Storm on it like with the uh, quick time events during the match. Yeah, uh, that I see. that one isn't so bad. I mean, it's still what? like it's still in a over the shoulder perspective. I prefer from the games, and the same, this time you can't really spam your um, supers anymore because you need to charge them over time during the fight. No, which is kind of sad because I can't just throw Kamehameha like uh, like I'm. Idiot, so. Yeah, like a madman. <laughs> like a madman. Like, come on, come on, come on, come on. So instead, yeah. I have to be more tactical, but at the same time, it it, it give me something new at the same time. Well, it's just that Dragon Ball has become very popular that they're going to continue to milk it like crazy. Even Amer <laughs> yeah, I mean, even you see the uh, the English dub of the series, it just gets redubbed all the time. I mean, take a look at Dragon Ball Z Kai right now. Well, Kai was actually most because, because the reason why Kai uh, comes uh, there's Kai now is they actually wanted one to follow the manga as close as they can because there was more uh, the show was basically aired at the same time as the manga, so they had to thin the, the entire story with dialogue that took forever, which is why five minutes could be ten episodes. Yeah. 
It's, it's, yeah, that's ridiculous. You see them standing there, just like charging up and just it's talking. Like, this planet is gonna explode in five minutes, and ten. And about uh, about twenty episodes later, there it blows up. Next time on Dragon Ball Z, will Goku defeat Cell? <laughs> no, no, they're still talking. <laughs> <laughs> no, so they actually, so they recut it and redubbed it, uh, so which is the reason why we got Kai now. No, uh, bad game. Uh, there was an episode where Goku fought against Cell. That's what I was on about. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you said defeated, so no. So that is Gohan. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, but you know what I mean. No, I didn't. Yeah. No. Just decided to just spot us. Just decided having to having fun. wishful hope. That's what I mean. <laughs> yeah, I know. Kind of shocked me when he died. Oops. Oh yeah, Oops. that was a big shocker. That was actually the the whole th- the the thing the ending with the uh, the Cell Game Saga or whatever was actually supposed to be the last story for Dragon Ball because you know Goku passes the torch on of Hero to his son, so that way. Which is actually explain all explain also why the Boo Saga seems much more sillier than the Cell Saga and Freezer. Oh no, kidding. And they they kind of dumbed down the the Z fighters a bit. Yeah, quite a bit. Quite a bit, especially but, also now that they uh, achieved the Super Saiyan form. It was like I just uh, one day I could just do it, and the other guys. But we had to train for months, weeks. I spent an entire year with no many yeah. years with no Super Saiyan. Said Goku, and it's like, and his kid mm. kid uh, Goten is Goten is like Goten. Yeah, I could just do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, forget wow. you, Dad. I mean, go on. Was, but um, was like, but, 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 but. Anyways, um, so do you guys give your thumbs up for uh, Ultimate Ten Kaichi? When I get for what it is, I, for what it is, for what I've seen, yes, I will. And when I get the game, I see if it's a yes or no. Yeah, it's it's a Omega? it's a far more stretch strategic. Uh, Dragon Ball game instead of Raging Blast 1 and 2 with you uh, punching your opponent away, dashing towards him, punching him again <laughs> dash teleporting. Uh, I, I definitely so like strategy, it adds a, bit, adds a bit more replay. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, they're telling you it's a tactical <laughs> fighting game It's just that you, you just can't spam your super attacks uh, this yeah. time it's just so You can't go miles away from your opponent and just go Kamehameha and the thing with the second yeah. one, uh, yeah. Raging Blast, or oh, Raging Blast Two. No, uh, yeah, there was two Raging Blasts. Yeah, yeah, the second Raging Blast is no story mode. Ooh, uh, not Dragon cool. Dragon Ball C fighting game with no story mode. I was like, what is this Galaxy mode? What? Cog? No. I want my story mode. I, I had yeah. to um, find. Well, I was going to buy Raging Blast 2, but right now I'm Bandai. I am getting sick and tired of this. The UK do have people who watch Dragon Ball Z and actually go and buy the games. Will you stop shipping such slow amount of the games to the game stores? Because as soon as a game shop here, like Game or Game Station, gets a copy, they charge it for like 30, 40 quid when a pre owned game is normally 20, 22. Hmm. I am getting sick of finding a copy of Raging Blast 2 in game being overpriced because of the fact that you release so, ch- so much copies of the game in unexpected. It just. Yeah, Very shocking I'm, to hear. The only way I could play the story mode is I went to where you could fight the AI, pick your bat, pick your character stuff, and mm-hmm. just fight one one. I had to recreate from there if I want to play the story mode. Right. I went. I went through my my books and just like okay, uh, okay, this one fight here, okay, this. So this is how it's supposed to go, okay. So I had to recreate it for myself just to get my story mode. Um, Carlio, do you give it your thumbs up from what you've seen? Yup. <laughs> yeah, okay. I don't really have that much, much <laughs> yeah, it's just it. so, that. Yeah, sure. It's just that we're kind of running low on time here, so yeah, we're yeah, gonna yo, need yo, to yo, hurry up and yo. get up. 
get over to the next subject. But anyway, yeah, yeah uh, Ultimate Tenkaichi or Dragon Ball Z Ultimate Tenkaichi, go pick it up today if you haven't. But anyway, guys, well, it's time for us I'll to look, get on to our... If, fi- if you've actually got money after you went and bought Battlefield 3. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But you don't. If you did, then I don't like you. Uh, Okay, guys, it's time for the execution. Bring it on. The execution. Bring it on. And the game we're going to ask this week is Bad Gamer. Final Fantasy XII. Uh, yeah, this can be quite. Uh, from what I understand, at least from what I understand, I'm not sure. Probably everybody's just going to go out and say, "Oh no, you're wrong, Carlio." But from what I understand, this can be somewhat controversial because I've heard that some people actually somewhat like it. But well, besides, I, you know the big, I, b- besides the big, you know the big overlooking fact that is called the character, what? annoying character, Vaughn. Vaughn. Thank you. Yes, and that's why you probably don't like it. I I, I, like I it hate re- it. I like it for other reasons also, not only him. I, I just like it for many other reasons also. Mm. The the. The thing is, he was one of the biggest reasons. I mean, he was just, uh, he had nothing. He wasn't even was a- part of the plot. Because he was just like, he was a background character. But he, was a, he was a side character. And he and that's the guy you control for majority of the game? No. Mm-hmm. Combat, it's a single player, but it acts like an like an MMO? What? Yeah, I didn't really like the battle system. What? It, it it took really long for you to level up your character. So yeah, it was treating it more like an MMO rather than a traditional Final Fantasy game. I mean, they could have action they could have an action RPG like Kingdom Hearts or something like that. But the thing is, it acted like an MMO when it's a single player. And the thing is, multi attack try to micromanage Three characters and make sure that they don't f it up. It's you're gonna have more kills than you're gonna have more carry more party kills than anything. Oh yes, and <laughs> it was really hard to uh, level up your characters, like I said, because the experience amount that you gain from enemies is just low. Yeah, so uh, low. And the hunts the only are way stupid. To- the only way to gain levels very fast is for you to kill off all your party members and just play as one only. Yeah, because the way they split up is retarded. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I, I do agree that it felt like it was Final Fantasy XI being, you know, put in Final Fantasy XII to still incorporate those MMO elements. But, yeah, it... it it hardly felt like a Final Fantasy game. I mean, of course it takes place in the world of Evil East, but, uh, that's, yeah. That's it, not the thing. That, that's not the problem. The problem is the, char- the, the characters that were supposed to be the main one and the combat system, which felt like an MMO, and says you, there's a single-player game, you don't have any people who can help you around. That's why, that's mm-hmm. why boss battles was so annoying when you faced them. It was like, oh, no, not another boss battle. Yeah, and even the quickenings were kind of weird to, or basically the limit breaks of the game. Mm-hmm. There were limit breaks. I never experienced those during my playthrough. They're called quickenings, but yeah. Yeah, but limit quickening, whatever. Highlander. Yeah. Mhm. It's just, ugh, I mean, there's lots of other things you know about this game that's so bad, but you know. It, but the main reason has to be the 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 main protagonist who you control for almost all of the game, and it's just seriously we're gonna go with this guy who hardly has any development at all. When you should have stuck with the sky pirate Balthier and the princess. Uh, yeah, pick either one of them, either the princess or Balthier. I mean, sure they often go with the with a main protagonist, except for thirteen, which was and six. But yeah, but but still, I mean. Either one of two. Better death than a whiny whiny little... Yeah, exactly. I mean, you go with a side character. Yes, the side character gets a spotlight. Meanwhile, the main character, which is both air or the princess, pick either one, gets the side character treatment. Yeah, it's 
just yeah, does it uh, add here's, a, here's actually good here's a good question who gets more personality development Baltair or Van Baltair of course exactly Baltair. we're supposed I mean, to be I... main character Baltair yeah but they act no, like no. Spawn. exactly why? It, it, it's, a, it's sort of like the same treatment bit with Final Fantasy X. The main character was supposed. To, well, I actually think I have to agree with Tony on this. It's Yuna, not Titus. Yeah, it's not. It's not. He's Titus always going. This because, is my story, and you're no part of it. And well, kinda in the in the sense. Yeah, we're following more how Titus doesn't how tight is like yeah, but, relives life or something I suppose but still it's more Juna's story well yeah, that's, that's kind of hard to say I mean I thought Titus uh, you know Titus. with him well, well I'm still Titus calling Titus. him Titus how they originally called him by but uh, it's just that Titus he uh, even though he came to this world unexpectedly you know I actually felt that you know the connections between him and his old man Jack were actually pretty strong for a you know, subplot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, but it could be a subplot, but it wasn't. It was the main plot. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, but, I, as I said, I agree with Spoonie, Yuna should should have been the main character, which she at the same time is, but it would be more focused on that, because she has the entire world of Spira on her shoulders. Right. Because she was supposed to defeat Sin, which it did, and then the break the rules water. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, go back to 12... But There's anyway, nothing, guys, um, nothing good. Nothing good <laughs> about twelve overall. Not even the music. There are some good points. Maybe some good points, but mainly no. And you, Omega? I've honestly never played twelve, so the only thing I um, know about it is from Underbelly, really. Oh, I see. And the, yeah, and, and I the fact that no. the hunt. And maybe Mega sixty. Maybe Mega sixty four. <laughs> No, Underbelly explained it more. Well, the Mega, the, if you haven't seen it, Mega, six, the Mega, the Mega 64 guys did a video where they pretty much dressed up like one and went out in the street, going, "Don't listen to Andor's lies," and just all of that. Yeah, they got the, they got punched out. Yeah, so that's that. seen. Okay, uh, bad gamer, would you like to do the honors? Accept. Finish him. Finish him! Indeed, we did finish him. So, yeah. so Final Fantasy XII has been axed for an eternity. And uh, now it's time for us to get on to our last segment, and that's the Video Game Playground. The Video Game Playground. Yes. Oh, yeah. Joy. Okay, who wants to start first? Omega Mario wants to start first. Sure, fine, why not? Fine, fine, fine. Well, I've been playing, uh, well, not much, seeing as I haven't bought any of the big releases this week. So, what I've also what I've already been playing is pretty much what I said last week, Forza 4. Uh, well, before we recorded, I was playing some Modern Warfare 2, but that doesn't mean I'm buying Modern Warfare 3. I just play Modern Warfare 2 for the fact that I wanted to play a first-person shooter. Mm -hmm. Even though I clearly stated once before that I just have a distaste for first-person shooters. Yeah. I be a hypocrite. You can always play Doom. Oh, you can always play Doom and Wolfenstein. <laughs> or Unreal Tournament or 2004. Hmm. Or okay. Postal. Yeah, I need to get on the good old or, games for that. Or GoldenEye 007 on the N64. Yeah. <laughs> now you're pulling my strings, double R. <laughs> Anything else? Um, no, apart from that. Okay. Carlio? Yeah, sure. I um, completed um, Arkham, Arkham City this week. No, not 100%, of course, because, my God, that is going to take a long time. <laughs> But so I you pretty much completed the main story, though, right? Yeah, yeah. and no while, the, while the ending wasn't... Uh, let's just say this. The ending was kind of disappointing, but at the same time... Uh, okay, sorry. Spoilers! Spoilers, spoilers, okay. bad gamer, cover your ears. 
Take off my headphones, I don't care shit. No. Oh. <laughs> Spur <laughs> count! Up oh, one. Okay, spoilers. Okay, spoilers, seriously though. How often do you play Batman wielding a katana, going, destroying Clayface? I was, I mean, yeah, Clayface me was like the stupidest thing they just brought in from out of nowhere, but it was awesome. Kind of like lesser ending, but but and still though, the ending kind of moved we moved we with uh, kind of what happened. You can take off the headphones now, bad gamer. Sorry for screaming. Put them back on. Okay. Sorry for screaming, guys. But, but yeah. I will say that they. But I will say that the you know Batman Arkham City was a great send off for Mark Hamill oh, yeah. as the Joker. <laughs> I'll just say it that much. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, In more than two ways. Yeah. Anyway, anything else? Uh, oh yeah, I've been playing Battlefield 3. The campaign was not, well, not extreme. Well, it's not the best, worst campaign in all the time. But let's just say this: it was no new Bad Company of one. It was no new Battlefield, Battlefield Bad Company. I'm going to say this right now. Bad, I'm going to say this in modern times, in modern FPS era. Battlefield Bad Company one had probably one of the best, it probably one of the best, if not the the best um, single player campaign in, in modern FPS times. Or in FPS yeah. overall. I'm just going to say this. I really like that uh, that campaign. Yeah, but Carlio, you're forgetting something about modern gaming, right? Especially well, when it comes to FPS. these kind of first-person shooters. Who gives a flying monkeys about campaign? Nowadays, it's just True. turn on Xbox, whack in the multiplayer disc, and shoot someone in the face. Or um, you can just pop in one disc if you're playing PlayStation 3. Haha. <laughs> But you still need to make some like some type of good campaign, and it obviously shows that while uh, while uh, Dice tried to make a good single player campaign, they failed. Sorry, sorry, Sweden, but they still rock because the game still the gameplay is still good. Well, at least at least the, the at least the game has uh, has a really good uh, engine, the Frostbite 2 oh, engine. Yeah, which is also I mean, needs to speed the run. So if you want a second big release to consider using that, then there you go. Needs yeah, to be the I run. Mean, yeah. Also, by the way, you're currently listening to Sonic Generations OST. If you haven't listened to it yet, do it now because it is amazing. Uh, yeah, that's another one of the big releases for next week. Well, that and Uncharted 3. Ooh. We'll have to debate on which one we're going to be talking we'll be, about more. We'll be but coin we'll tossing. See. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Or we uh, try cramming both of them. So. Oh, yeah, double. Bad Gamer? Uh, Bad Gamer, what have you been playing? Not much, actually, to say this week. It's, um, uh, let's see, let's see. Ah, yes, I played some uh, DLC games. I played uh, Infamous 2, Festival of Blood. How's that? It was a really good. That is how you should do when you do, when, when you do a DLC. It was not, it was, I wish it would be a little longer, but it was still, it, it was, Really good uh, with the whole po with the new power ups, the vamp the vampire power ups, uh, Cole got and, s and some new abilities, uh -huh. and the story. Once again, what can I say? It's it's you should buy it. You don't need the original. You don't need the game because you played off directly from when you download it. So it so it's really good. I recommend you um, you buy it. Okay. I also, um, so it's what so it's the DLC. So the DLC is one of those types of DLC that's actually done. Right. Yes, it's not. It's not like it. They took it out of the story. It actually felt like it. They actually cared about this DLC because for what the story was, for more like more or less a tale, it was good. It was done in such a good way. Also, they took away the karma right. system, so you could. So you don't you have don't have to feel bad that you kill anyone. Ah. Okay. I also I played a bit of the missing link from D O six. And oh, I haven't cool. played so much I uh, so I can't really say much about it either. And that's been my playing week most because I am everything as I told you about last week I'm done. And I'm waiting for next week for Uncharted, so. Okay. Well, the game that I've been playing, and I know that Europeans are going to be pretty envious when I say this, but Kirby's Return to Ooh. Dream Land. 
Yeah. I I will definitely say this. It doesn't it doesn't hold the charming art style as Kirby's Epic Yarn, but at least it still it it retraces back past elements or adds in fan service from past element you know past games into this one. It's definitely lots and lots. Collect an item, anyone? Time to get time to, but, uh, time to yes, in time to get killed again. Quick question: Can do you have to be a multiplayer partner to play as Meta Knight, or can you play as, sing as single player also? You, you have to use multiplayer. Well, no, actually, you can, if you complete, the, if you complete, I think I heard from somewhere, if you complete the arena, you can actually play as. If you complete the true arena, rather, you can play as uh, all the characters if you want. Oh, so if you, or if you complete the no, whole yeah, game I or complete the, the arena, I think you it was the true arena. But then again, you have to complete the true arena. <laughs> Good luck with that one. Uh, well, if if that's the case, then at least there there's a <laughs> at least there's uh, a good just saying, good reason is, to this is play rumors, it more. So just from what I've just from what I have heard, I don't know if it's true. Or not. Well, I know, but but if it was true, then you know, well, it then that wouldn't be a then, Kirby game if you could not play as Meta Knight because the recent games you have been able to play them in some form. Because you know, you want to know why? Because Meta Knight awesome. Because man, no, no, no. Because man, nice is a badass. It's the same thing. It's awesome. It's a badass. It's no, 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 awesome. no, no. Badass is badass is more yeah. better than awesome. No, he's coming up. There yeah. we go. <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely a really fun game, and uh, I I enjoyed it a lot more. And uh, and um, let's see. I would definitely recommend you know you guys in Europe picking it up next month, right around the same time as. Uh, Skyward Sword. Yeah, too bad. And, uh, Skyward Sword is going to be sometime in December. <laughs> so many games. So yeah. many games. So many games. Game so member. But yeah, but yeah, it's a really fun platformer. It's a little bit easier. It's not as challenging as say, uh, <laughs> as like uh, Kirby's Adventure or Kirby Superstar or any or the uh, Crystal Shards or whatever. But it's still a pretty solid okay, game, regardless. It's really solid if you have friends to play with. But yeah, it's still really fun. The extra mode yet? No, I have not. I'm still playing Good it. Good luck with that one. I've finally seen that one. Is pretty tough. It oh, is I bet. Pretty tough. Isn't the, isn't yeah. also an and, uh, I, I still have more of those uh, cogs to it, obtain. Okay. So Good luck I have still you. long ways to go. Isn't it often special mode or oh, something yeah, like that you. where you like to cut your ha health in half or something? That they cut your health in half. All the enemies get bigger and all the bosses get stronger. Oh, sweet! Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. Good luck. But yes. Good luck. Kirby's, the, uh, Kirby's Return to Dreamland. Boat loads of fun. Go pick it up today. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> oh,